So this is where we finished off at the end of our last video. We'd formulated the problem and we'd got our flow conditions. First step we're going to take is we're going to look at what happens to the flow as it passes across the first shock wave. We'll calculate the conditions at state 2. And then for the rest of the problem we'll calculate across the second shock wave to get to state 3, then across the third shock wave to get to state 4. We'll start off now by looking at the first shock wave, S1. Let me just slide the screen down. So we're interested in shock wave S1. Let's just do a sketch of, it, sketch of its geometry. There's the shock wave, and it's at angle beta 1 to the oncoming flow. There's the oncoming mark number M1, and the mark number downstream of the shock wave M2. From the geometry, the angle here is beta 1. This angle in here is theta 1. So this angle in here is beta 1 minus theta 1. And we'll put in our normal components of Mach number, so MN1 and MN2. So our oncoming Mach number is M1 is equal to 6.8. And the angle through which the flow is deflected, theta 1, is 8 degrees. The first thing we're going to need to do is work out what the shock deflection angle beta 1 is. So we need to find beta 1. And to do that, recall this expression here, which was a relationship between the flow deflection angle theta, the shock wave angle beta, and the normal component of Mach number MN1 with the ratio of specific heats in that. Now the problem here is that we don't have an explicit expression for finding beta 1. So we, we are going to have to find a, a method to determine what that flow to what that shock wave angle beta is. So in order to get the shock wave angle from the flow deflection angle and the Mach number, we can use one of these theta beta Mach number plots. So this was the plot that we had in our when we we're looking at the results from the Drummond tunnel. So we've got flow deflection angle here going from 0 to 50 degrees and the shock wave angle going from 0 to 90 degrees. And the curve we're interested in here is the curve for Mach 6.8. And we're interested here in a flow deflection angle of 8 degrees, so we've got to work out what's the shock wave angle for that 8 degree deflection angle. Let's zoom in a little bit on that plot. So here I've plotted it from 0 to just over 14 degrees flow deflection angle. The shock wave angle is now going from 0 to 30 degrees, and we're going to be interested in what is the shock wave angle for a deflection angle of 8 degrees. So this is the one here. So when we take that across, we see that it's just under 15 degrees. So let's say around about 14.7 degrees is the shock wave angle for a Mark 6.8 flow with a deflection angle of 8 degrees. So from our theta beta Mark number plot, we get that the uh, shock wave angle uh, beta 1 is approximately 14.7 degrees. I'll just slide the screen down a little bit. And now we have enough information to start doing our calculations of how things change across the shock wave. So the first thing we have is, or we can calculate, is what the Mach number component normal to the uh, shock wave is upstream of the shock, so MM1, and that's going to be M1 times sine beta 1. So we can put in those numbers. Our Mach number M1 is 6.8, and we now have our beta 1, which is 14.7 degrees, and that gives us a component of M1 normal to the shock wave of 1.73. And let's now try and calculate what the static pressure is downstream of the shock wave. When we did our oblique shock wave analysis, we obtained this expression here where we said we could calculate how the static pressure changed across the oblique shock wave if we knew the component of the Mach number normal to the shock wave upstream of the shock and we knew the ratio of specific heats. So we can put in our numbers here. So P2 over P1 is going to be 2 times gamma, which is 1.4, 1.4 1 
times the component of Mach number upstream of the shock wave, 1.73 squared, minus 1.4 plus 1 over 2.4. And when we do that calculation, we get the pressure increases by a factor of 3.31 across that first shock wave. Therefore, our static pressure downstream of that shock, P2, is going to be 3.31 times the static pressure upstream of the shock, which was 1,000 pascals, and that comes out to be 3.31 kilopascals. Next, we'll look at what the de static density is downstream of the shock wave. And we had this expression for the static density change across an, uh, an oblique shock wave if we knew the component of the Mach number normal to the shock upstream of the shock. So therefore our rho 2 over rho 1 is going to be equal to gamma plus 1, which is 2.4, component of Mach number upstream of the shock wave, normal component 1.73 squared over 2 plus gamma minus 1 0 0.4 times 1.73 squared. That comes out to be 2.24. So therefore, our row 2 is going to be 2.24 times our density upstream of the shock wave, which if you look further up, 0 0.01584, and that gives us 0 0.0355 kilograms per meter cubed. I'll just slide the screen down again. Next we'll calculate the static temperature downstream of the shock wave. You recall that this was the expression we had for the static temperature change across the shock wave. This one looks pretty horrible, but we can do it a little more easily than that. If we note that we can relate the static temperature T2 to the static pressure P2, the gas constants R and the, that right, the static density rho2. So therefore our T2 is our P2 which is our 3.31 by 10 cubed pascals over R which is our 287, rho 2 which was 0 0.0355 kilograms per meter cubed which comes out to be 325 Kelvin. So we've got our pressure, density and temperature downstream of the shock. Next thing we want to calculate is what's the Mach number downstream of the shock wave. And we had this expression to calculate what the component of the Mach number downstream of the shock wave normal to the shock wave was. So we can calculate MN2 as being square root of 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, which is 0 0.2, times our 1.73 squared over gamma 1.4 times our 1.73 squared again, minus gamma minus 1 over 2, which is 0 0.2, and all of that to the half, and that comes out to be 0 0.634. So we have the component of Mach number, normal to the shock wave downstream of the shock, but we want what the Mach number is. But we know that MN2 is going to be M2 sine beta 1 minus theta 1, which gives us that M2 is equal to our MN2 0 0.634 over sine beta 1 minus theta 1, so that's going to be sine our beta 1, which was 14.7 degrees, minus theta 1, which was 8 degrees. When we do that calculation, we find that M2 is 
0.43. So I'll just slide the screen down and summarize what we have so far. So this is it. This is it. We've got the mark number, static pressure, static density, and static temperature downstream of the first shock wave. And we're ready now to go on to look at the second shock wave and what happens across that. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to redo those calculations using a compressible flow calculator. So I'll do that in the next video.